you always were. But there are always a couple of annoying problems. If you take horses and oxen to war with you, you tie up a percentage of your troops looking after the animals. Also, if you see no one for a long time, maybe you will have a clue. And if you do that, you may not eat the There's no way of loading on the table. So somebody somewhere had a brilliant idea. Why don't they do away with the horses and the oxen and use manpower? We will use our soldiers to load our shields. We will use medieval crowns. Medieval crowns are basically huge wheels with men who to be They are ingeniously simple but amazingly efficient. Without those crowns, we wouldn't have the seeds. Our castles, white castles. We take two crane wheels. We put them inside the trebuchet. The two wheels are linked by a set collapse. You get four arms with two in each wheel and you get them to walk that way. There's a rope attached to the throwing arm. It comes down from the pulley and up to the central axle. There it is tied on. The men's walking action tightens the rope around the axle, which pulls down the arm and lifts the counterweight. That huge wooden box which hangs in the middle of the machine. That box with its contents weighs six and a half tons. So you witness four soldiers who their labour lift that incredible weight. But it is hard work. When you walk the wheels, your calves are tight, your thighs, your chest, it's not easy to breathe. But there's worse. There is a thing called trebuchet sickness. If you make the mistake of walking forward through the slats of the wheel, you get a shimmer in white. This brings on motion sickness almost instantaneously. And it's not alone for a trebuchet winder to literally throw up inside the wheel. That is not a good idea. Because if we throw up on the floor, it becomes the ceiling. It becomes the floor and the ceiling again. And again and again until it covers you and the inside of making it a very dangerous place. Crucial moment coming up. There's a metal boot on the arm. Our trebuchet master is just going to lock, there it goes, a trigger through that metal boot. That's the reason. Below the trigger, he pushes in a steel pin. So there's no way you can pull the trigger by accident. You need to take the pin out first. That's for the safety of the crew. And just to make doubly sure, he locks on a high taste textile chain. That is to make sure that also that nothing can fail on this machine launch itself. That would be extremely dangerous when men in the wheel. Back into the wheel they go. Now they go the other way. What they're doing now is they're winding off the rope, the one they wound off in the first place. That is tight around the axle. Until you get rid of that rope, you cannot shoot the machine. No, yes, I don't think it's my imagination. The winder that's on the wheel nearest us is in trouble. I think he's made the mistake of looking through the slats. I think he's suffering from trebuchet sickness. The wheel stopped. He's out. Yes, I think he's going to be ill. I think he's going to be sick. The trebuchet master comes over. I think he's going to give him a drink. There he goes. He gently listened to his feet and clips him back into the wheel. It's hard, isn't it? Yorkies who reinforcements 
are already on their way. They've discovered my intention. So maybe we try another type of warfare. Maybe we try psychological warfare. We have Yorkist prisoners. Shall we behead them? Put their heads into baskets and throw those into the city? As an example of what happens to them if we do have to fight our way in and they don't give everyone up. Still going to take time. Might not work. They are resilient. Maybe we fight a dirty war. We load the trebuchet with the carcasses of animals that have been dead for weeks. Pigs, dogs, horses, throw those into the city. Straight disease. Maybe we need to get into the water system. You haven't got fresh water, you'll have to think about surrender. Or maybe you play the ace, which is up to my skin. There is one thing that many of the man fears more than anything else. In times of peace, is his greatest hour. That is fire. If we set under the light, I think it will be over in two or three hours. We turn London into an inferno. The people will either let us in or they may just open the gates and turn Edward out. Yes, that will be our game plan. This afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, in our drill, we will shoot a fireball! This is an 18 kilo rock which we have wrapped in sacking and we have soaked it in fuel all afternoon. It doesn't go into the sleep, it goes into the set of light. It has a metal hoop set within the rock. A chain is attached to the hoop and then a rope to the chain. It goes into the center trough, straight across the end of the arm, and we launch the entire thing. Prepare to load. The projectile is taken out of the fuel mixture and put into the center trough. Goes on to the hook. Taking it back, make sure it's full of time. Clear the machine, the orders load us out of the way. Turn the master then steps up and takes off the sofas. First of all, we remove the chain. Then he steadies his hand and he gently pulls the pin from below the trigger, making the machine laugh. Steps down. Takes the rope which is attached to the trigger, he will then order the lighting of the projectile and fire. And fire, and it starts to burn in the middle of the machine. Now our trebuchet master is holding his nerve. Pulls the trigger too soon, the projectile goes out. Too late, and his trebuchet is on fire. So he holds. And he holds. We launch 